Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third of four videos in this series, and I'm updating an app that I created in a previous series to use iOS 15. In this video, we'll be improving our app's UI by removing the dependency on our to-do form view. We'll be adding swipe actions for deletion and completion of to-dos, and we'll also be binding our list to our view model to offer inline editing of a list row and the addition of new to-dos directly. Before I get started, let me request that if you enjoy the video, please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. And since so this is a continuation from the previous video, you should just use the code from the completion of that last video. However, I've also included the completed video from part two, and you can download it from the link in the description below. The first thing I want to do is add a swipe action on a row. And I have another video that covers swipe actions in iOS 15, so you might want to take a look at that. This new feature was added to iOS 15. So let's remove the on delete function and replace it with a swipe action. And we can do this by using the swipe actions method on the content of our for each loop, which happens to be this button view. I see that I can also specify the edge, which means we can create both leading and trailing swipe actions. The default is trailing and the allows full swipe is true, which means that we can use this to replicate the on delete functionality. And since these are the defaults, we can choose the first constructor for our swipe action. And then we can hit enter on the closure. Now for the content, we can use a button with the destructive rule. And this means that the button will display a red background. Let me leave the action for now. And for the label, I'll just use a label with the text delete and a system image of trash. If I run this now, I see I can swipe from the right and I see the trash can and as per the UI guidelines, the delete word is omitted, but it's useful for assistive technology. I want to either tap on the trash or swipe all the way through to delete the to-do. The problem is that we no longer know the index of that to-do that we want to delete. So we'll need to return to our data store and create a new delete function that this time accepts a to-do instead of an index. Now, since the arguments are different, we can call the function the same delete to-do, but this time we'll pass in a to-do item. Well, we can find the index using an if let to check on finding the first index where the to-do IDs match. Then we can call our to-dos arrays remove at method, which requires an index and pass in that found index. And then we can call our throwing function, save to do throws, as we did in our original delete function. Now back in our swipe action, we can just call this function, passing in our rows to do. Let's test again, but let's first create a couple of dummy to do's. I can swipe from the right and tap on the delete button to delete the row. Or I can pull all the way to delete. The big problem I have though is that this is a very abrupt action and it's not as smooth as the original version. Well, we can fix that if we return to our swipe action and enclose our deletion in a with animation block. Let's test again. First, let's add a couple of new to-dos. And now when I swipe from the trailing edge and delete, 
I see that we get a nice smooth transition. Let's extend this a bit now. I'd like to add another swipe action that will allow me to complete the task instead of having to go to the item and toggle it. This time, however, I want the swipe action to be from the leading edge, so I'll need to specify that. But I also want to be able to do a full swipe, which means that this property is true, and that's the default, so I can delete it. So the new swipe item is another button but this time with no roll. For the action, I'll leave it blank for now, but for the label, it'll depend on whether or not the to-do is completed yet or not. So our label will be a text view with the label that says, if the to-do is completed, it'll say remove completion. Else, it'll say completed. And I also want to set the tint color of this to a new iOS 15 color that is teal. When we test this now, we see that if the to-dos is not complete, it shows completed. If we go and change one of our to-dos to completed, and swipe again, it shows remove completion. The problem is that the to-do object is immutable, which means we can't modify it in our action. But there's some good news with iOS 15. We can easily change that. We can now use a for each loop on the binding to our view model instead. All we have to do is add a dollar sign in front of the view model to-dos and to the argument for the closure. And now for our action, we can toggle the completed property of the to-do because it's now a binding. And then we'll call the data stores update to-do method, passing in this bound to-do for updating. Let's test. When I swipe from the leading edge, I can toggle the completion status. So if I can toggle the completion status by swiping, wouldn't it be nice if I could update the text in line too? Well, you can. I need to remove the button and change the text to a text field that is bound to our to-do and binding the text to our to-do's name property. This does cause an issue with the strike through, however, because a text field does not have that modifier. So we're going to have to delete it for now, and I'll fix this in a minute. With this being now a text field, we should be able to now update our to-do inline because a text field is editable. So when we submit a change by tapping out or pressing enter on our keyboard, we need to update and save our to-do. Well, we can do this now by calling an onSubmit method on our text field. And for the closure, we'll call the data stores update to do method, passing in that to do. Let's test that completion first. Notice when we swipe, the color changes to green and vice versa, depending on whether the to do is completed or not. I still like that strike through, however. So to fix this strike through problem, I'm going to add an overlay of a rectangle with a fill of color green, but a height of only one pixel. And I'll set the opacity to zero, meaning it'll be invisible if the to-do is not completed. Otherwise, I'll set it to one. Let's test this out. That's looking great. Well, we can edit and update the to-do in line. So let's do that and exit and run again to see if that persists. Yes, it does. So if we can mark things as completed and update it to-do, what do we need that to-do form view for? Well, we still have to add it to-do. But when you think of it, 
completed is set to false by default, and all we're doing is asking for a new to do item. So if we remove the modal type property, the sheet method that would toggle that sheet to be presented, and the reference to that modal type in our buttons action entirely, action and create a new one. And then we can create a new function for our buttons action that will simply add a new to do with no text. So in data store, I'll create a new function called new to do. And in the body, I'll simply call the existing add to do function, passing in a new instance of a to do where the name is an empty string. Returning now to content view, we can call this function in our add button action. If I test now, I can add tap to the add button and add a new to do, and it's created, and I can go ahead and edit it. Now, I wish there were a way to set the focus here, but so far I've not been able to find a Swift UI to do this. So let's create one more grocery item like one for eggs. When we're done, we can tap the return button and the keyboard dismisses. Let's tap on another one as if we're going to edit. But do you see the problem? How can we dismiss the keyboard if we no longer want to edit? Yes, I can tap return, but I should just be able to dismiss the keyboard too. And this is an easy fix. Let's return to our to-do form view that we're soon going to be removing and copy our focus code from there. So first, I'll copy the toolbar modifier and paste it into our content view after the alert. Now this will require an optional property called focus field that is declared with the focus state property wrapper. So we can set it to nil. Well, this time I'm going to make it an optional Boolean instead of that enum. Next, we can set the focus of every one of our text fields in our for each loop to be when the focus field equals true. And we'll place that just before the overlay. If we test once more, I see that when we tap on one of the rows, the keyboard appears with the dismiss button and tapping it will dismiss the keyboard. So we could now, if we wanted to, remove both the to-do form view and its corresponding view model and the modal type model. I'm going to leave them here right now just for reference. In the final video of this new part of the series, I'm going to be adding a search bar that will allow me to filter my to-dos list based on the criteria of a search field.